I guess uh, other events can learn from this. Yeah. And especially the one that I hope to see something like that ha- happen is for F1. Uh. <laughs> Given we, everything we know about what, how F1 <laughs> is implicated in, in the whole corruption. I thought you were going to say Taylor Swift, no, no, but no, F1. No. Then Ong Bing Singh and Iswaran take them out for dinner. One night in Doha. One night Fly. in Doha. <laughs> Fly them for a private jet for a one night only experience in, <laughs> in the Doha Street and then fly back business class. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala, ba, 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 ba. your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. It's another week. And it's still oh, co-play before. Still co <laughs> Still co-play. It's co-play week. It's still co-play week. Today yeah. is the final show, right? I believe so. Number six. Yeah. Oh, can't believe it, man. Can't six. get away from it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Six. It's like even yeah. F one doesn't even last that long. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> this is co-play week. Yeah, like mm. co-play week. Crazy, man. Yeah. But yeah, like, uh, another week. It is the thirty-first day of the first month before we move into the second first day of the second month, Terence. Mm-hmm. How does it feel, man? January has felt very long, eh? Like a lot of things happening, you know? Oh, is it? Don't you find? No, I felt it was quite fast. Oh, really? I, f- yeah. I felt like since we came to the new year, uh. a lot has happened. I guess because Iswaran, Coplay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, you know, everything, basically. Chinese New Year Dragon. And yeah, then the weather weather patterns are slowly shifting. Oh, that's true. Very different from December. The start of now. Jan. No, yeah. like the start of Jan and end of Jan. Yeah, yeah very different. Very different. Yeah, yeah. So it feels very long. Oh. Like we just went through a season. Yeah, and... that's a good Singapore season. Yeah. And then now Chinese New Year around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feeling the festivity already? Yeah? Um, I mean, you have a kid, inevitably, you will. Mm. There will be a lot more things to do. Uh, but this, you think about it, yeah, this is the first year since like, yeah, pandemic all, they're really celebrating it. Like. And I don't say celebrating, but mm. like doing all the, the stuff. Like, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. now it's probably back to pre-pandemic levels generally also, right? Yeah, but everyone's saying it's quieter. I oh, think yeah. the Chinatown markets are all quieter. That's true. Um, You know, even Orchard was quieter over Christmas and all as well. Why? Eh? What's people happening? People traveling. Uh, really? Yeah, maybe. And generally people buying stuff online. You know, less inclined oh, to fight true. and deal with the crowds. Unless you're going to a co-play concert. Co-play again. I think I think you are probably the person who has the most negative experience with regards to co-play in Singapore without even going to the concert. Uh, Possibly. Possibly. Uh, yeah. I've realized. Uh, you the, feel life is worse off after this whole co-play week? I'm the co-play Grinch. La. I won't you deny. Are the Grinch, la. You are a Grinch. Yeah, I won't deny that maybe I talk about it a lot because yeah, I wish that, you know, maybe I could be there and all that. But then, you know, there there is that equal side of me that, that like, it's like the devil and the angel, right? Mm. The devil's like, I mean, do I really want to deal with, like, the crowds and all that? No, I don't, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and and I've come to terms with that decision, no? yeah. Mm. It feels like internally nice you had a lot of things to sort out and clear your mind about whether or not you want to go. La. Correct, correct. And last night I did ask myself the question, am I really just, like, getting oh, really? old? Uh, like, do I just don't want to go to concerts or what? But no, I found a concert recently that I really want to go to. Mm. And it's because it's the venue, it's a better venue. It's a band that looks interesting, exciting, doing something different. I watched music videos, I was like, oh, this is exciting to watch, you know. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure 100% sure I'm going, but I'm trying to go, I'm trying to get tickets. And tickets are accessible. I don't have to join some stupid queue and be like (laughs) one millionth in line. It's ridiculous, right? The whole process is just ridiculous. So to me, it's like, that's what concerts were like when I was uh, younger and trying to get go concerts and all that, like, you know, it's, it's, you go and you enjoy yourself and, and you don't have to, this co-play thing really was like, it felt like when I was going through the logistics of people who were going, it's like going for National Day Parade like that. Like, why? You know? It was so easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's part of it that it's like, you're almost like babied into the whole process. Okay. And then Terrence, you go in there so this and is where right, people. you be a grinch by yourself, lah. <laughs> don't don't spread your grinchness on other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like everybody has a preference. Correct, and correct, like correct. if it's not your cup of tea, it's fine, Terrence. Yeah, yeah it's, okay, it's okay. But don't try and convince people that it's actually not their cup of tea, but they're just having the cup of tea because that's what society tells them and social media tells them to do. 
I think if anybody was like trying to convince anybody, is you uh, <laughs> no. trying to convince yourself. No, no, I'm, no, no. I say I'm, I'm fine with my decision, but yeah, I'm fine with my decision about it. Uh, I know, but you know, yeah. even last Friday, you were like waiting for my text. Oh, he never <laughs> texted me. Like, oh, I go to sleep knowing that Harish didn't have that good a time. No, no, no. Again, no. you're obsessed. No, yeah, no, 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 no. You're obsessed. I think I think you are really you are too obsessed. much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happily at home, just like chilling. This and is like the standard standard uh, checklist for people who are obsessed with stuff. They deny, deny, yeah, deny, yeah, but yeah. deep down, right? Obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm just okay, what happened, okay, one yeah. of our topics has to do with Coldplay as well. Has to do with Coldplay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting topic lah. Yeah. But but yeah, I, yeah Coldplay. I, 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 I think, yeah, so I came to that conclusion that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not that, uh, I have not grown older or cynical yet lah, right? Mm. I was still, I can still go out there and enjoy myself. It's just that I choose how I want to go out there and enjoy myself lah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rather than let, you know, market forces determine everything for me. Yes, there is. Yes, <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like after this week, there will still be Coldplay stuff because tonight is the last concert. Mm. Uh, but there's also some other stuff that's happening. That's been happening. Taylor Swift, uh, Taylor Swift coming. Uh, yeah, Taylor Swift. Uh. <laughs> it's only like a month plus break. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coldplay. Only uh, like Chinese New Year break now. Yeah, Taylor, Taylor, Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift. I think she has to go to the Super Bowl first, lah. Uh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the that's true. For her. Yeah. That is true. That's true. But yeah, uh, we got two interesting topics. Mm-hmm. But uh, before before we jump in, yeah. what's our regular spiel, Terrence? Uh, if you're new to this podcast and you it brings some value to you or a smile to your face, please consider following and subscribing because I think uh, it will really help us a lot uh, in terms of people discovering this podcast too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you want to work with us, just hit us up at contact at ministryoffunny.com. Mm. Sweet, man. Yes. All right. The first topic. Yeah. Uh, the telling people, you know, uh, to stand up, not just for Coldplay concerts, but for something else also. Yeah, man. And what is this? Uh, it, uh, it, it essentially unfolded at a recent uh, IPS uh, event, which is the Institute of Policy Studies. Mm. Um, and it was held at the SANS Expo and Convention Center on Monday, 29 Jan. Uh, January and it was titled uh, or themed Singapore Perspectives 2024. Mm. So during, I mean, the whole day, like um, if you look at the the lineup, it's uh, yeah a lot of um, discussions and panels and uh, talks about things that pertain to youth. So some of the panels, the titles were like, "What is being youth like today?" You know, the terrain ahead, the mm. centrality mm. of well-being, um, and youth and work. Mm. Uh, youth and family, uh, and one of the the final, I think the final dialogue session was with uh, Dr. Janel Putucheri, who mm. is a mm. senior minister of state for uh, Ministry of Communications and Information and Ministry of Health. Um, he's also the chairperson of People's Association. Yep. Um. So there was a question fielded by someone in the audience, uh, Clement Tan, who is the spokesperson for Ping Dot, um, Ping Dot SG. Mm. basically um, asked a question talking about his own personal experience, how uh, when he was younger, his his mom pulled him aside and told him, if you really want to be happy, uh, you have to move abroad. Mm. And he said 12 years later, uh, he's facing the same question. So when he posed the question to Dr. Janil about what would be a message to youth who feel or who do not believe that there is a future for them here in Singapore. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Dr. Janel's response has caused some discussions. Like basically, the line that is on all the newspaper articles is that stay and stand up for what you believe in. Mm. And of course, we'll dive a bit deeper into how he respond, responded. Um, I think he responded like two minutes plus, uh, mm. the response. But um, yeah, like what, what made you want to talk about this, Terrence? Uh, I think it's an interesting discussion, right? Uh, uh, especially all the responses you're seeing about this, lah, right? Mm. Uh, about whether you, you know, as a young person, whether you choose to choose to stay and fight, yeah. or you pack up your bags and find greener pastures elsewhere, lah. Mm-hmm. And it's not very dissimilar from stuff that we have asked, uh, you know, prominent politicians who have come in our studio here before. I think very explicitly we asked uh, the very similar question to uh, Ng Kok Song, the presidential candidate, about his message to young people who feel disillusioned about the rat race in Singapore, right? And in some ways, his answer was also like, um, don't be lazy, remember? And uh, yeah, ruffled a few feathers. Some people are saying like, wow, what a, 
a careless comment, right? Mm. Uh, and yeah, you know, like that, that, that was the message uh, to young people. We are Shamugam also, right? I believe we are Shamugam yeah, as well, yeah. yeah, about what, what you... And he said something about like, understand that they had it is a competitive world. Mm. There is going to be competition yeah. and not everything can be taken for granted. Something along right, those yeah, lines. Something right? along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Which people, some people said it was very old school. Yeah. Like, okay, why style, right? So yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad this topic came out and it's specifically with regards to LGBT youth, right? Mm-hmm. LGBTQ plus youth because uh, yeah, the repeal of 377A happened not too long ago mm. but does it mean that the battle is won already? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... So, I mean, like, some other things that, that uh, Dr. Jana mentioned was um, uh, my message is stay, fight, stand up for what you believe in in a way that brings inclusion, brings every Singaporean with you on that journey and to make our society better for your community. Went on to say that, you know, not all Singaporeans agree on what better means, mm. but uh, it's um, the, the country needs to have discourse and engagement about how we move forward. If you leave, you take your ideas and your views with you. That's not going to help your cause. Mm. So, and he also pointed out that, you know, um, 12 years ago, uh, when uh, Clement, uh, Clement shared his personal anecdote of his, the conversation with his mom, like, no one would have thought that 377A would have been repealed. Uh. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, and closing off, if you want to make a difference, leaving is not going to help you. Yeah. So, then about his response, right? Because, I mean, there were other panels that talked about, you know, the definition of family um, and that it can be expanded. But, Going back to Chanil's response, do you have a uh, a reaction to that? Um, I can see where he's coming from. Mm. Uh, he is speaking, you know, on a panel, uh, responding to a question from someone who's also the leader, a leader, lah, right, in mm. the in this civic uh civic activism, lah, right, for LGBTQ community. So, in some sense, from that perspective, you can see why he's telling uh, Clement mm. to stay and make sure, you know, fight, lah, right? And not to abandon the ship and leave because they need people like him around, lah, right? Mm. Um, but if you take what he said, which, and then uh, we think about the question, which was about to all LGBTQ youth, lah, right? So, mm. the idea of being a leader of the community doesn't apply that like, way, lah, right? Uh, people will have very different views about it, about what he said. It might mm-hmm. seem, seem a little tone deaf in some ways. Or yeah, yeah. How about uh, you? I mean, like full disclosure, we've had Dr. Janel on his podcast a few Twice. times. Twice. Twice, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but I do feel his response, even I listening to it, I'm not from the LGBTQ community, mm. but I was I was thinking, okay, let's say there are other uh, things that people are facing in Singapore. Mm. Uh, of course, you know, sexuality, your identity, it's very different from, say, like, wealth inequality, right? Mm. Or the lack of, like, economic mobility mm. or, like, any other challenges you face. If I were to hear that, you know, stand and fight, maybe when I was younger, I would be like, oh, you know, we can really change things. But then as you get older, you also think, like, okay, then it's also down to the citizens to always be fighting to change stuff. Mm. Uh, the people in power who are making the decisions against sentiments that people are already expressing I mean, it feels like it's just putting all the responsibility on, on people. Mm. And if I were to hear it, I'll be like, uh, I mean, right now, we already have people moving all around the world for, for whatever reasons. Lah. I wouldn't even say greener pastures, just different preferences of living. Um, and yeah, lah, to the whole notion that everybody should put country before self, right? Oh, that one I think is a tough sell. Lah. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other side of it as well, Beyond the, uh, oh, you stay in Singapore and you struggle and you fight, right? Yeah. The other side of it is uh, kind of a uh, tangent to what you alluded to. That going overseas or leaving to find greener pastures doesn't always mean that that means your engagement if Singapore stops. Yeah. Um, even take our industry, for example. Like they say, oh, let's, if we, if we sit here and say our aim is to, you know, create great content, right? Mm. As media content creators in Singapore. Uh, does it mean that we must stay in Singapore and only do Singapore stories, lah, right? Mm. Is that the best way to inspire a new generation of storytellers or whatever, or content creators? Uh, actually, you could argue no, lah, right? Mm. If you really want to make a name for Singapore out there, part of it is also you might need to leave Singapore and make your name out there, lah, right? Mm. As athletes have done, as some artists and musicians have done, right? You make your name out there and then you 
then you find a way to come and contribute. But part of it means that you have to take the uncomfortable step of uh, leaving it, leaving your comfort zone, and yeah, just finding finding your own way out there, like, right? Competing yeah. with the world, and then making it, and then coming back and contributing. So it seems a bit archaic to say that you know the only way to improve is to stay and 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 improve things from within, like, right? And yeah, find from yeah. within because. If anything, the successes of people like uh, Joseph Schooling, right, have shown that, hey, sometimes you need to get out of Singapore, you know, find different training regiments, different training partners, improve overseas. Then then you you improve yourself on the world stage and then you come back and you inspire everyone to try and do the same, right? Yeah. So uh, the, 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 that's the issue that I also have with this, is that it's a bit of that go chok tong quitter versus stayer mentality, lah, right? Oh, like what was the context of that? Because I think the word quitter was uh, uh-huh. coined by go chok tong. He labeling people who you know leave Singapore and all that as quitters, lah, right? As opposed to thinking about uh, the larger context of you can be Singaporean but not necessarily stay in Singapore and be doing and and be doing civic uh, civic activism in Singapore, lah, right? Yeah, you could be doing it. Out. Uh, overseas or doing building your career overseas and and, and being the beacon of, of of light for Singapore overseas like, right mm. and uh, would you say that someone who's who's doing that is less patriotic than someone staying in Singapore and fighting the system here and everything like, right like Amos <laughs> yeah a bit of a stretch <laughs> like. I think a pedophile being overseas is not exactly yeah, a beacon of light if he didn't have that pedophilic uh, sentiments but I was speaking about uh, Singapore from a distance I mean, yeah, you're still speaking about Singapore. Of course, it like the context also matters. Yeah. But that was just like uh, off tangent. Yeah. But yeah, I would totally say that just because you... I mean, a couple of things, right? Just because you go abroad and speak out against Singapore, of course, there is the risk of you kind of like having your cake and eat it too, lah, you know? Mm, mm. Um, and, and then it depends on what you say or what you do lah, yeah. um, abroad. But I wouldn't... I, I think it's totally possible to be even more patriotic when you're abroad mm. or if you like you go there you experience something you come back and like then you use your world experience to enrich whatever cause you were fighting in Singapore do you say that from personal experience of uh, being a club Singapore president club of Singapore your president of your Singaporean students I mean I had to come back like, I had no choice like, I was mm. bonded right yeah 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 I actually wanted to stay on in the US or yeah. spend some time abroad but I had to come back mm. um, but I think that, that's a good question you asked also because I, like even between us we have gotten a chance to go to LA to work on like uh, yeah. TV shows you know? and we have also thought about in the past oh, what would it be like if we just went to LA uh, or like went to a place where the media space seemed more vibrant or more open to the kind of content mm. we we like. Yeah. But I think there is a bit in both of us uh, that wants to do cool stuff in Singapore and bring Singapore stories to the world. Mm. Right? But I know like for actors and all who move abroad and all, I mean, kudos to them. Mm. Like Andy Chen, right? Yeah. He, he went abroad. Yeah. So I guess coming back to this statement, on one hand, you get sometimes, you know, like let's say Shamugam. Mm. I, I, I do believe uh, that what his response to that was that, okay, Singaporean youth need to understand that the world is competitive. Mm. Or if it's not Shamugam, we have heard elsewhere, if you are not willing to work hard, someone else will take your job. Mm-hmm. So in that case, Singaporeans are almost expendable. Mm. But in this case, when we need to change a cause, it is down to Singaporeans, it is on Singaporeans to change the cause. And I mean, of course, I think everybody should try to fight to change the cause, but uh, if they believe in, if they really feel that bad, but if they want to leave, I don't think it should be held against them also. Mm, mm. So that's why when he said this, it just felt like, wow, I don't know how the person from Pink Dot uh, uh, felt, but even me as an outsider of that community felt like, I don't think that's the most, uh, the best answer to hear. Yeah. And just to finish up the point I was making earlier before you mentioned the MRC and derail oh, the conversation. <laughs> I was talking about Go Chok Tong in, uh, I think, okay, the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the speech, he characterized people who left Singapore as quitters. Uh, and that's where the word quitter came from. La. So it's a very binary way of looking at, you know, Singaporeans who move overseas. Are you stay or quitter? La, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Just because you stay doesn't necessarily mean that you're, that's the best use of your talents, la, right? And, and yeah. That's what we have ambassadors for, like, right? To go overseas and talk to people and, and also show what, talk about the Singapore story overseas. Like. Yeah. And, and I think my university and, and living abroad experience was very transformative in terms of 
understanding, yeah, why, how, how I want to contribute back to Singapore and, and, you know, like even just what being Singaporean means, lah, right? Mm. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, maybe uh, this characterization of stayer or quitter just uh it's a bit a bit old school uh, a bit too old school mm. feel. one thing he did say which i agree is that he said you know uh i mean based on his own experience working with youth abroad mm. he said not the grass is always greener and not yeah. to say in a country where the policies are maybe a bit more inclusive towards lgbtq individuals the youth there don't face challenges mm. Uh, which I can totally understand. I think yeah. sometimes when people see moving abroad as a solution to everything, that is also dangerous. Correct. Because every country has pros and cons and flaws and all. Uh, but yeah, I guess at the end of the day, just making it seem like, yeah, like what you say, if you leave, you take your ideas with you, you take your thing and things won't change. Mm. That one feels like, hey, but it's a, I think that's a bit too much on the the average citizen to to be held responsible for the way things are. Mm. Yeah. I think the other thing about this also is that we are not part of the LGBTQ community, right? Yeah. Um, so, I think you also can't think of them as a monolithic group that yeah. will think the same way. That, Like, I remember years ago, I, I, I was asking uh, uh, a person who's LGBTQ community, hey, hmm. he's like, hey, I'm going Pink Dot this weekend. Want to go or not? Want to go or not? Thinking, thinking that you are like, an ally. Yeah, thinking that like, wow, yeah, so such an ally, so nice, let's all uh, go together. But I think the person was like, no, I have no, I, I don't, I don't, it's not my cause, like, right? It's not the thing that I want to fight for. Mm. So I have no, there's no reason for me to be there. I mean, good for you that you want to go there and, you know, show your allyship and all that, now, right? But it's not something that I, I, I believe is the core of my, uh, my identity either, lah. Mm. So yeah, don't 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 force me to go there or you know judge me for not want, not wanting to go lah, right? Mm. So in the same way, uh, not everyone in the LGBTQ community or that wants to be a leader to stay and fight and you know fight for for policies or it's not that thing lah. Yeah. And if they decide like oh, I just want to I I just want to live my life and not be disturbed. I don't want to have to deal with you know feeling like I'm discriminated against when you know uh, buying property or whatever things like that. Then I'll leave, lah. Right? Mm. Uh, yeah. So, I think that's the the thing to remember. Also, the context of of maybe who uh, Janiel was was addressing. Like, I think he's talking very specifically to Clement, who's a very you know a uh, very vocal advocate, like, Right? For mm. LGBTQ rights and all that. And maybe his point is don't don't leave, don't stop what you're doing, like, Right? Because yeah. what you're doing is important. But but you know if you take that out of context and apply it to a whole group a monolithic group of LGBTQ people then it might seem very uh simplistic lah right yeah but then 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 he should have been more specific because I mean mm. the mm. video that I saw it was posted on Mothership so yeah. I'm assuming that press was allowed like it wasn't mm. like you know a super closed door thing like you know Talman's uh, meetups last year in oh, the yeah, election. The secret, the secret presidential secret, meetups secret with influencers. Meetup. That's why. <laughs> that we were not invited to. Yeah, that we were not invited to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, if the pub, like, the, I think these sort of things, it, it matters. If you're speaking specifically to a spokesperson uh, of an organization that is championing the cause, yeah, of course, stay. You know, you guys have been doing great work. But yeah, I, like what you said, like, if you're speaking to the broader audience, it just feels a bit tone deaf. Mm. And also, you know, like, the the one thing you know now like fucking people are moving all over the place to work right? now yeah. every one like so many people are going to Dubai yeah, 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 yeah. but you never hear people tell the people going for Dubai hey you know Dubai I know no tax yeah. why don't you stay and try and change the tax code in Singapore like Ronaldo lah why didn't he stay in menu and try and change from within change it from within yeah, oh, one is like another MSG <laughs> analogy it's totally different <laughs> okay yeah I'm just saying true. like people yeah. who are you know when people move abroad for work mm. the general consensus is like wow congrats opportunities yeah it's opportunity and I think the message we get from the government or I don't know whether it's explicit or not but feels like if you're going to you know like for promotion voting it's a good thing mm-hmm. right but if it comes to you living a life that you resonate with yeah, you yeah, change yeah. your life in Singapore. Yeah. Then like, it, it, like I've never heard anyone getting a overseas posting abroad or something being kind of like told that, why are you going to work abroad? There's a brain drain in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone is like, oh, they, they are, they are, how you say, celebrated. Mm-hmm. And then when people come to Singapore to work, we want them to come. Yeah. You know, for all the talent that Singaporeans apparently don't have. Yeah. So then it just feels like there's a bit of inconsistency lah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's, and that's a bit, that's a bit annoying lah. Yeah. I mean, the, what you said about people going abroad to work is 
is very true, lah. Right, mm. like that. Um, it, but I guess to me, it's like you know the in terms of if you are an LGBTQ person, I and I'm not trying to speak on their behalf or what. Lah. I'm just asking a question. Uh, you know, there could be a possibility you you have looked at all the options overseas mm. and still decided you'd rather be in Singapore, lah, right? In mm. spite of everything. Uh, you and I, we know we have mutual friends who have lived in, who are LGBTQ, right? Who have lived in San Francisco and because of everything that's going on in the US and yeah. politics these days, yeah. they're saying they'd rather be back in Singapore. Mm. They want to find a way to move back to Singapore, you know? Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, the, the grass is greener here or it's better or anything. But I'm saying that these people also have the capacity to weigh the pros and cons and decide mm. for themselves, ah, I will take what Singapore offers lah, and I'll find a way to make it work here. Lah. Mm. Uh, and same for the other side, like some decide, oh, I'd rather go to the US and deal with uh, crime and gun crime and stuff like that there, but also have a bit more freedom in of speech or whatever. Mm. Lah, right? Mm. And it's okay, lah, you know, that's that's what your right as is as an individual to, to make a decision like that. Lah. Yeah, exactly. It's like last time dating, right? Mm. The more you tell like this girl, hey, date me, lah, you know, you know, stay and we make this work, you know, mm. change me, you know, change. The more it's going to be like, mm, yeah. but you tell him, you go, you date other people. Mm. You know, of course, I'm not saying that was the approach I took. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like when you say, you know, everybody has their right to, to move. Yeah. Um, if you want, yeah, sure. Um, uh, of course, I know he can't, it's going to be tough to say this at a panel. Of course. You know, especially when you're in some way the government representative. Like. Yeah. Uh, so, everything that people say on panels, I also always take with a pinch of salt mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it might not be the true sentiment. It is the sentiment in the capacity that they're coming as. Like. Yeah. But, yeah, like that thing, yeah, I think just making people feel guilty is like, you know, like the whole straw thing, like, you know, don't have your straw because mm-hmm. turtles, uh, tur- it might, pierce the nose of a turtle or something. Oh, he's saying drinking straws. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like hay, straw, you know, that kind of thing. Since when have we ever talked about hay? I don't know. That's why right. you didn't set the context. Like you said straw. We're talking about straws. <laughs> I'm like, what? Straws? <laughs> okay, drinking straws. Okay, you know yeah. the whole thing like, they, like the guilt that are put on people for taking a straw mm-hmm. compared to the guilt that should be put on corporations that have like fucking proven histories of like just being very environmentally sustainable. Is the division of responsibility, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in this case, yeah, like, just, I mean, I, I, yeah, just, just the sentiment given is a like a, a response and all, a bit, a bit, uh, not the best, lah. I feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, would love to hear Chanil's uh, take on it also, lah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I think he's always a very eloquent person. And panels are not the best places to, correct, correct, to get correct. very nuanced answers or so. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, we don't know what was the questions asked before, what they talked about, you know, in the preceding this question and mm. after this question. Maybe more context was given, you know. Yeah, there, there was more conversations about family and life and yeah. the roles of spouses. Yeah. But yeah, who knows? Maybe in a few weeks we'll have Johnny along. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But <laughs> I, I would say one thing, right? Like, um, I guess... Uh, you kind of need to focus on the the, the positives a bit, lah, right? If you are if you are in his position as a mm. as a representative of the government, lah, right? Like mm. to tell people to stay in fight. Because I think the way the question is framed, it sounds like it's it's a bit saying like, oh, this person is downtrodden and like is being stepped on and just wants to escape, lah, right? You know, and and inevitably, as the representative of the government, he has to paint a more positive picture of it, lah, right? Stay mm. in fight, lah, right? Mm. Uh, but it might be more a more nuanced discussion if you're asking for your own personal thing, yeah. your own personal steps you should take like, for yourself. Mm. Like maybe for you, there's a career reason to move out of Singapore, like, right? You know, you go to the headquarters of your the whatever place you're working. Then, then yeah, then totally go for it and we won't even frame it as a leaving the LGBTQ uh, environment here or anything. It will be framed as like global talent being poached and going overseas, like, mm. which we would celebrate, like, right? Yeah. And and yeah, I think maybe that's the nuance of the the conversation that if you are talking, if you know exactly who you are addressing. Uh. Mm, and I mean, also the sentiment there, you know, stay and fight. It, I also wouldn't disagree fully with it mm. because, you know, like being in media, when we work with actors and all, we know are uh, like talented. Mm. There is a very magical and beautiful thing when a group of people, you see, wow, these people are all damn talented. Let's just make some cool shit to really put Singapore on the map. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. there is that strength in numbers. And it would be sad if all the Benjamin Kings and Jasmine Sokos all just went abroad. Uh, mm-hmm. Because there would be some some gap in Singapore. Uh. 
so so the the sentiment yeah it's it's hard to i mean how to disagree fully. Maybe it's because the overall climate of Singapore where, you know, things are getting more expensive. Everything is getting, feeling like, wow, it's becoming more challenging to generally live. And then you hear that if you want to change things, you have to stay and fight. It feels like, huh? But I had nothing to do with things becoming more challenging. Mm. And yet I have to be the one to fight to solve. That's a bit hard to swallow. La. Magic, magic can eat. Or not? You say magic, 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 magic can eat. Or not? Magic can buy you ticket hey, to go go play, not Magic. When you when you said before that you get emotional watching a movie and a scene that you know with the perfect lighting and cast yeah, yeah, yeah. and sound, that's magic, Terence. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah. And people pay for magic. Yeah, people. Pay I for paid magic. for magic last Friday, and I got <laughs> half of the half of, it. <laughs> half of the magic, experience. including the song Magic, which oh, yeah, was yeah. fucking great. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, dude, magic, magic is like is like this this nebulous thing that if you can capture and kind of how you say monetize then you can get food to eat la. yeah yeah magic is that initial injection to the agar agar la, right then it percolates yeah. and then it's it the takes a long time yeah, yeah. I say agar agar is a very Singaporean thing you see because yeah. I'm a stayer I'm a stayer, you're a stayer. <laughs> I'm a Singaporean person I'm oh stayer. Yeah, you're a stayer yeah, yeah. you're a stayer uh, but yeah, yeah it's an interesting discussion la. and I, I do I do yeah I, I do um, empathize a lot with uh, you know people who, who find it difficult to even just lead what is considered a normal life here. Mm-hmm. Like. But that's where the definition of what is a normal life here also is important, like, right? Because like, yeah. it's not just about LGBTQ, it's also about social economic status and all that. Mm-hmm. Like, can you afford a car? Is that Should that be considered normal? You know? Deodorant, right? There was that study. Deodorant, yeah. Uh, can, you deodorant. Deodorant? can you uh, afford to eat at somewhere other than a hawker centre, you know, once in a while? Mm-hmm. Is that considered, should that be considered part of normal? So mm-hmm. it's a lot to do with what the public perception of normal is as well. Like. Yeah. Yeah, la. Mm. Uh, and I think that was also covered in the in the in the event when they were talking about you know the definition of family being expanded. Um, I mean, yeah, like I think next time we should try to go to this event, man. Mm. If anyone mm. from IPS is listening, we would yeah. love to be there. Yeah. Uh, and these conversations feel like important conversations. Mm. Mm. But yeah, uh, interesting, yeah. Uh, speaking of trying to mooch free tickets for stuff or so. <laughs> 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 our next, our next, our next topic, topic is uh, about the concept of um, yeah, some people getting free tickets, but but then getting questioned about it, lah, right? Yeah. And what is this topic? Uh, uh, and it was the slight kerfuffle caused by um this initiative by a local nonprofit uh called Krishna's Meals, uh Krishna's Free Meals, uh who serve breakfast and lunch to migrant workers in Singapore. Mm. Um, they partnered with a non-profit organization called Love Button, which is part of a, a joint initiative with Coldplay to, that they have instituted such that in every country they go to, they work with local non-profits to improve the community there. Mm-hmm. Like. So Krishna's Free Meals was one of three in Singapore and they donated um, or they, they got 10 tickets to the Coldplay's, Coldplay's concert on January 27th from Love Button and they gave it to the migrant workers. Eight la. of them, right? Uh, eight. And two chaperones. Of yeah, two chaperones, yeah. two volunteers. La. And the way they gave it out was during a holy festival, uh, I think a few weeks ago, when they were giving like um, packets of nuts, they just attached golden tickets uh, to c- certain packets of nuts. Mm. Then eight of them found out that, oh, they actually have this golden ticket and it is for the Coldplay concert. La. So that video, I think they posted something there and they already got some pushback from people saying, wait, like, do they even know who Coldplay is? Mm, mm, is this mm. the best gift to do? Mm. Uh, and then they went for the concert Then Krishna's Free Meals posted another video showing them, you know, singing and like... Three of them. Three, three of them, yeah. yeah. The three, because out of the eight, five couldn't make, make it. it. Yeah, for work or whatever. Either That's they had work or they were not contactable at the number that yeah. uh, they gave. So the three went with two volunteers. There was a video posted on Krishna's free meals and the narrator who I guess is one of the main people behind it, mm. you know, even called out the shade that they had received. Mm. And the kind doubters. Of, la. The doubters. La, and yeah. said, you know, music really brings people together. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the migrant workers were wearing the bands and they were moving their hands and, and all that. La. Yeah. So it was a bit polarizing. La. Mm. It was a bit mm. polarizing. But Terrence, yeah. what are your thoughts, man? Uh, before we jump into the conversation, yeah. I just want to point out that we were the pioneers <laughs> of uh, giving migrant workers stuff 
uh, and then featuring them on social media, all right? We would, uh, we, we, I think, I, I do believe that we were the first to like do it uh, in one of our videos, like, right? Back in 2015. 2015. And it was the video is still out there. It's called Labor Day. Yeah. And it's basically we interviewed a couple of uh, migrant workers. Mm. And then after that, we we shipped them off to Sentosa and sent them flying down a zip line, <laughs> right? As a reward. <laughs> we didn't la. ship them off. Okay, like that. Yeah, we brought we them. were there with them. We yeah, yeah, had yeah. the interview with them also <laughs> on. On Sentosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we got them on a zip line. Like. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, because, and I talk about that even though it was almost 10 years ago and all, because it was a, it was a debate that we were having, right? Yeah. Like, does it seem very tone deaf or silly to, to like, uh, you know, talk to these migrant workers, talk about the issues that they face and, and about making ends meet and all that. And then we bring them for this, frankly, quite expensive experience that is over in a couple of minutes, uh, right? To, to go down a zip line and, and that's it, lah, right? That's mm. the point of video. Let them enjoy something that they helped to build also, right? Mm. And we talked about it, lah, right? And uh, I think um, what what was the conclusion that we that, that made us still push forward with the video? If I recall, yeah. uh, if it was just a video of them on the zip line, yeah. we wouldn't have done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but because we literally had a three-hour conversation with them that we mm. condensed into like a four-minute video that was very mm. highly... Uh, praised and received. Yeah. Um, us putting it at the back was almost pointing out or uh, mocking something that is a sad truth that they pointed out. Like, that mm. A lot of times they build stuff and they can't even enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, the, and I think one of them literally said something along the lines of like, you know, during building, during construction, we can enter, we can enter. Mm-hmm. The moment the day is completed, we cannot enter. Yeah. So when we did the zip line, it was almost a callback to that. Like, mm-hmm. If I recall. Mm. Was that the context that you remember? I believe so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it was a conversation between us and like, uh, yeah, you can see the video. We put a link in the show notes. Mm. The last part, <laughs> yeah, I was on the zip line. Uh, was it just me? It was you, just you, yeah. Because uh, oh, you were recording from below. Uh, no, I think no. we wanted to save money. We just didn't want to send everybody oh, yeah, on the zip line. It was that expensive. Like, we would we were considering that. Like, yeah. yeah. And then I think only one of the, the migrant workers we spoke to could get on it because he had yeah. shoulder issues. Like the other yeah, one had shoulder correct. issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, now you set the context. Yes. Then what were you going to say? No, so I wanted to ask you, like, what what do you think of uh, an act like this from the greatest band of all time, Coldplay? From Coldplay, yeah. I don't think they decided how the non-profit in Singapore should deal with the tickets. Like. Okay. Uh, so, it, like. yeah. yeah, I think it's, even Love Button, they give the tickets, uh, I don't know what the, arrangement was between Love Button and uh, Krishna's Free Meals but yeah mm. Love Button donated 10 tickets yeah. uh, and Krishna's Free Meals gave it out like. so at first I was thinking huh but isn't it something like would is this really what they prefer or, yeah. or what they want isn't like I don't know like a a meal or something uh, like that they really enjoy but they did get a meal that was part of this yeah, yeah, yeah. or should they go to a concert that is in their language you know but yeah. after looking at it like uh I find the the passive aggression of the narrator mm. in the video a bit like off putting, mm. but overall the initiative, right? Mm. I actually think it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why Why do we go from like you mentioned? You alluded to it already. Ah. But why don't I just pull up some sure. of the comments that 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 the Krishna's meals is also Krishna's meals is Krishna's it? free meals. Krishna's free meals, uh, have called doubters, like, Right. So one of the comments, uh, on in the TikTok is like. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing because the grammar is not right. Lah. You, uh, you give away these tickets to Tamils and Banglas, uh, Bangla people, how they understand this type of music. The music industry is still not developed. <laughs> there's a comment there. So, I mean, that's why uh-huh. they talk about music, you know, whether music has a language. Lah, right? And Chris, that's Krishna's free meal's response. Music has no language. Another comment is, um, as sweet as this is, this is why true fans can't get tickets. It's nice, but how about something they know, love and enjoy? You gave them something they have no clue about. Saying that, yeah lah. The migrant workers probably not even fans of Coldplay and all. Um, and then another comment. Hopefully they don't sell it. But if they do and use the money to treat themselves, by all means, you know. Mm. Uh, and then another one. Nonsense. No foreign Indian workers, no Coldplay. So there's this very big assumption that um, just because they're migrant foreign workers who maybe speak different language, you know that they don't know Coldplay. La. But I remember very distinctly the last time when we did that video, uh, there was this funny part where we asked him, oh, what kind of music like? And he, he mentioned Justin Bieber, la, right? yeah, one yeah. of the people in our video. Yeah. 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 And that was 2014, correct? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I think it's a bit of a broad assumption that 
they don't necessarily know pop culture and music, la, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the assumption that they'll sell it also. Mm. Uh because I mean okay, so so the, the, the about the selling, I think Krishna's free meals clarified that they were given the tickets on site mm-hmm. after having dinner with the volunteers. The uh. workers were given the tickets yeah, on site. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they weren't given it beforehand. Because that it. assumption that it's just going to sell it is yeah, like, yeah. okay, uh, wrong assumption. Mm. Um, and I think Krishna's free meals themselves said that um, the concert was a magnificent... So this was when CNA reached out and mm-hmm. a spokesperson for Krishna's free meals said, Everyone had a wonderful time. The concert was a magnificent show and the migrant workers who didn't know the music at all were rocking to the beats and enjoying the spectacle. Mm. It sounds something no one had ever seen before. Uh, they felt, the volunteers felt the joy of the workers and it was very satisfying for them to see uh, see them having a great time. So, mm-hmm. they said that the workers didn't know who play. Yeah, yeah. But even then, right, I still don't see it as like a bad thing mm. or a tasteless thing. Mm. Uh, but for you, um, no, I think, yeah, it's, if they get the ticket, it's their prerogative what they want to do with it, yeah. right? Um, you know, whether they want to go out there and rock to it or they don't want to. But, like, this Coldplay thing was, it's almost like, uh, an, uh, feels like a National Day Parade kind of thing, mm. really, like, like getting tickets to National Day Parade. So, yeah, if they can partake in, in something that everyone, a lot of people in Singapore are also partaking in. Mm. Why not, man? It's a, it's a, it's a good night out, la. Yeah, yeah. And you cannot deny that when sixty thousand people come together in a stadium, mm-hmm. it is a spectacle. Yeah, there is a lot of emotions and sentiments there that doesn't happen often. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure even if you went to Coldplay, yeah, the acoustics and all, you're like, oh, I don't know the song. Oh, you know, uh, you will still. There's something beautiful about being with sixty thousand other people and just okay, watching okay. shit happen, like you know. Yeah, yeah. just that characterization of <laughs> complaining about things. I think if anybody was complaining about things and bitching about things, it was probably you in the first half of the concert, like, right? Like, <laughs> so there's more was, like you. Uh, that was how was, you sounded. Uh, like. <laughs> I was, I was, I was. But still, if you ask me at that moment, am I happy that I'm there? I'm like, yes, because you look around the stadium. Yeah, yeah. Everyone had like that coordinated uh, light bands. It really is amazing. I saw videos, yeah. The light bands, it's the thing. It's fucking crazy. It's, it's, it's yeah. interesting. Uh. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And after you do, you give it back because, you know, yeah, for, yeah. for for recycling, recycling yeah. you know. Um, and yeah, it, it was just a spectacle. And then I was thinking like, oh, people don't know the songs, you know. I mean, like, look at fucking K-pop. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I would assume that a lot of people don't understand the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, I like the latest Jungkook song. Uh, I have no idea what he's singing. Yeah. Uh, but it's still a nice song. Yeah. Uh, and you can rock out to it and have fun. Um, and and also I think because there was a dinner beforehand, the concert is not over in like five minutes. Mm. I would imagine more people giving us shit for bringing them to the zip line because yeah. it's literally on a hot day. Yeah, two minutes. <laughs> go zip line, fucking go. Woo! <laughs> da, 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 and then music yeah. like music and, and then finish. Yeah. But I mean, we also had a three-hour conversation with them, and we yeah, yeah, yeah. we got some food for them and all. So in this case. Yeah, la, I, I was ready to be like, shit on this, la, I won't deny. But mm. when I saw it, and I was like, okay, la, actually. Why, why, why do you want to shit on it initially? Why, is your, why was your initial inclination to shit on it? Because I was thinking. Exploitative. Uh, like, uh, yeah, in some way. And it's almost like you do this thing. You know, sometimes when, when people do a nice thing that is nice in their heads. Yeah, yeah. But it's not really the nicest for the people receiving it. Yeah. Then it feels like, okay, then you are just self-serving and selfish. Yeah. And it's all about you. But when I look at this, right, I'm like, hey, actually, I mean, it is an experience. It was a whole night, uh, a yeah. night off, I guess, yeah. for them. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, hey, shit. The only thing that was a bit, like I said, off-putting was like the the narrator kind of like aggressive, aggressive. with that higher, holier than Tao kind of uh, like music uh, that knows no boundaries. <laughs> yes, that. So yeah. I'm like, um, okay, like, I mean, they enjoyed it. I'm wondering why the other five didn't come. Mm. Maybe they didn't want to go, and they rather just spend the night resting, Yeah. Which is, is understandable. Choice? Yeah, which is understandable. Yeah. But I wish that maybe like there were other people, maybe some other of the workers. Also because, right, like the foreign workers, I remember during COVID, I don't know whether it was a statistic or anecdotally, a lot of TikTok users and people generating content were migrants in mm-hmm. Singapore because they use it as a way to connect back with their communities there. Like, because yeah. certain countries, they don't allow WhatsApp, right? Yeah, yeah. So TikTok, actually, they use it. And if you're on TikTok, chances are you would see this. Yeah. You might not know Coldplay or the songs, but you know that there is this thing happening in Singapore. Mm. So for the people who left those comments. Yeah. And I think part of it is um 
like what we were talking about, about what is the concept of normal in Singapore, like, right? Yeah. Actually, one of the more heartwarming things when you when you are overseas, uh, I mean, of course, very different, like, right? I was living overseas as a student and expat and all that. You also were living overseas as a student. But one of the more heartwarming things is like sometimes, uh, I remember during like Thanksgiving, like, right? A lot of times, like, uh, for Singaporean people living overseas there, you, you don't really understand the holiday or you maybe don't know anyone. And one of the nice things is when, you know, someone local invites you to join, spend Thanksgiving with their family and all that, right? Mm. Which I did one time, like, once in my, my time there. Mm. And uh, it, it's not about, like, being treated, you know, like, on a going on a private jet and flying you to Doha and having a fucking great night out or what. But sometimes it's just about, like, experiencing what, life is like for a normal person who lives in the country or so, right? Mm. And in some ways, this Coldplay concert was like... It's I mentioned, normal. It's it not there's... normal, but it's something that a lot of Singaporeans are, ha- are experiencing yeah. or talking about or are going through. And just being able to p- be part of that experience as part of your experience of living overseas is so nice, right? Yeah. Uh, like a normal, like a, like you live as how what a normal Singaporean uh, person would do also. Mm. Even just for the one night, it's, it's an eye-opening experience. Right? But that being said, for all we know, the three migrant workers who did go, yeah. maybe by the end, they're like, oh my God, thank God it's over. <laughs> ah, uh, film me again. Okay. okay yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, film me again. But I was going to do like, yeah, the action. Like, oh, I got to look like I'm in Yeah, so, so, oh, yeah, fix you and all this stuff. I don't care. So we, we, we never know, lah, right? We never know. But yeah. uh, I hope uh yeah, these comments don't deter organizations from uh, doing these things for, for them, for, for migrant workers or so. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, like for Coldplay also to do that whole thing with Love Button where every country they go, they work with non-profits. Yeah. I mean, a solid sell here. Yeah, yeah. But Coldplay, what? Coldplay is like a walking United Nations on its yeah. own. Uh. They got what? Talking about climate change, like Saving donating trees. charities. Yeah, that, everything yeah. recyclable. Yeah. Uh, and they haven't become like very annoying about that yet. So yeah. So I mean, kudos to them. Like I didn't even know this collaboration with Love Button where they work with nonprofits around. It. It's not. Mm. It's not front and center, lah. For them, it's still all about the music. Yeah. Which is nice. And these are all the the trickle down effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Coldplay. I guess uh, other events can learn from this. Yeah. And especially the one that I hope to see something like that ha- happen is for F one, <laughs> <laughs> everything we know about what how F1 is implicated in, in the whole corruption. I thought you were going to say Taylor Swift, no, no, but no, F1. No. I would love to see like, you know, yeah, F1 tickets also being distributed to, to migrant workers. You know. <laughs> Level the playing field a little bit. Level the playing field. <laughs> then Ong Bing Singh and Iswaran take them out for dinner. One night in Doha. One night in Doha. <laughs> <laughs> fly them for a private jet for a one night only experience in... <laughs> Then the Doha Street and then fly back business class. <laughs> one night also, uh, it's also one yeah. night. Uh. And that's what Singaporeans are experiencing. Uh. Yeah. yeah, it is one normal night. Singaporean life. Yeah, uh. yeah you all, you're, you're, uh, yeah, this is normal. $4,700, nothing. Uh. It's nothing. You know, this is what normal Singaporeans experience. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Come on, man, you guys. I like, do allow it. Uh, one night in Doha poor experience. People, poor people alert. Uh. Poor people alert. <laughs> yeah. There should be a tour group that organizes like the Isoran Suite. Uh. Then the go Isoran to watch a musical, the different musical yeah. suite. <laughs> <laughs> go, to, go to Doha for one night, watch all the musicals yeah, and yeah. then like, uh, yeah, come back and then just like, just the, the tickets and then the Isuran yeah. seat, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow it's solid. The Isuran package, you know, 32 tickets for F1. Yeah. You just buy it in bulk. Wow. Oh, wow, sure. allow it. Green room. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The green room. <laughs> the Isuran experience. Huh? They should sell that as a category. <laughs> yeah, no need the EBA virtual <laughs> thing, you know. Just make a virtual immersive experience of what it was like being Isuran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a lot more. Just for those, just Fucking for those great. three days. Yeah. <laughs> Let's slowly recoup all the the three hundred forty three thousand through sales of this <laughs> Isuran immersive experience. That's true, uh, <laughs> like yeah. the Taylor Swift VIP experience. This is the 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 the, the, the yeah lah, the Iswaran the Iswaran experience. Yeah, right? the Iswaran experience. Hold oh, on, power. Yeah. All right. But cool. I mean, yeah. Cool, kudos man. to Coldplay, uh, Krishna Free Meals. Shout out to all of them for for you know doing this for migrant workers. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's um. Good. Yeah, man. Cool. Uh, but let's about, yeah. yeah let's look at you know, stay on the positive and think about what's your one show comment. Yeah, my my one show comment was a comment on the the Reddit post for our previous episode four eight six, um where, I mean it was a correction la, that made me feel like a fucking asshole. Um, I think 
wasn't it wasn't my one shock thing, but uh, mm-hmm. wait, was it my one shock thing? It was my one shock comment back then that someone had posted about uh the new book by Mister Tay King Soon, who is mm. like a maverick architect and one of the OG architects in Singapore. Mm. I think he co-founded DP Architects. Um, his book came about, and I like an like an ignorant dumbass mm. mentioned that he had passed away. Yeah. Uh, but a uh, redditor goes by the uh, name of Buzi Liang Li six seven eight nine, who I don't think has commented before. Mm. So in some way, he's bringing people out. Yeah. Uh, they pointed out that he is actually eighty four this year, uh, very much alive and still very feisty. Mm. Mm. Uh, and then Leo Tu commented another comment. Yeah, Harish don't anyhow say people passed away. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm mm. so sorry to people listening, uh, Mister Tay. Uh, if he ever hears this, mm. uh, great to know you're alive and well. And uh, yeah, just. Keep staying alive and well. And all the best with the book. So your, your punishment is to read the book. Right? Yeah, read, read the, the book. book. Yeah. Can I don't know why is that, I thought. But but yeah, so this is why the subreddit and comments are amazing because yeah. you all call me out when I make a mistake. Yeah. So thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, my one should comment is uh, also from the same thread on Reddit. Mm. From Snoo Dingo's 316. And I like this comment a lot because uh, yeah, it gives a lot more details into... The the you know the the concept of using CDC vouchers to get uh special services at Masseuse as well at Masseuse as well. Uh. Mm. And Snoo Dingo's 316 tells us that the special service at Heartland Massage Service is normally a hand job, <laughs> which single lonely people will need. In some other countries, it is common for both sexes. Uh. Yes, those massage therapists definitely do it willingly for money. Anyway, the CDC vouchers can only be used for the entrance fee massage, but not the actual happy ending. <laughs> So yeah, he goes on to say, I'm I'm quite surprised why this massage parlor want to bring such attention to themselves, considering what they're doing is illegal. They want to attract them all men for business, but these massage parlors already got so much business. So I really yeah, appreciate that people like they understand the ins and outs of this, lot, right? Yeah, that was a very detailed, <laughs> very detailed answer. <laughs> and clarify like what exactly this special service. Uh, so you say is. what is normal in Singapore, right? Yeah. But in Hartland massage, what is normal yeah. for single lonely people overseas? Hand job. Hand job. Yeah. <laughs> Both sexes. Both sexes. Both, it's not one sex. Could be a he or she. Snooting oh, goes. Shout out to you for, you know, you know, like, uh, yeah, pointing that out. Yeah. yeah. Two very important clarifications <laughs> yeah. that came out in our subreddit. <laughs> Thank you, listeners. Yeah, and, and the point is true that you can only use the CDC vouchers for the official massage. Oh. I think you want a special services. Maybe top you up. can't use, yeah, you top up. You can't use the CDC vouchers. Oh. So there's a natural, there's a natural thing. I think they want to pay cash. Uh, cash. But they'll just lump it together, right? Oh yeah, because they had they. I don't did, think they'll they, differentiate, right? That's true, because they labeled it a prostate uh, stimulation massage or something. Yeah, like, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they just give you a a price. I mean, when yeah. you order food from something else, you top up one piece of chicken and all. They just add it, line. The yeah. chai peng is like oh five seventy. Then you use your CDC voucher, then they scan. Yeah. So maybe we need Snoo Dingo's three one six to go come and on, clarify. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What like after from your experience? You like, go on the ground. <laughs> yeah, go on the ground and and get some. Quantifiable evidence, like a good today journalist. Like though. a good today. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes. But yeah, cool. And and uh, what about your one show thing, man? Uh, I just started watching True Detective on mm. HBO. Mm. Um, season one. I think now it's season four already. Uh, but yeah, season one is Matthew McConaughey and uh, Alessandra Dodario, uh, and Woody Harrelson uh, the, oh, the Woody Harrelson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, only a couple of episodes in, but I, I, I really quite like it already. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. It's a seems like there's a. Uh, I, I would I imagine there's a longer storyline that builds up, and I, I hear some rumblings of like season four being linked to season one some way. Because every season is an anthology, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a different story, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Different, different story, stars, yeah. everything. So yeah, this one was all the way from 2014. Oh, good, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good. So yeah, I encourage people to check it out. Cool. Um. Cool. My my one show thing is something in the world of a uh, field hockey, mm. uh, which mm. was a world that I used to be involved uh, a lot last time. Yeah. Um. But basically, okay. So if you've ever watched a field hockey game, they it's played on artificial grass, and they, there's a lot of watering of the pitch, lah. Mm-hmm. So there are these jets at the side that would spray water before any game and during yep. halftime. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's quite a quite a spectacle, but after a while you get used to it. But the reason is because artificial grass, uh, there's a lot of friction. Mm. And because the hockey ball is a lot smaller than, say, a soccer ball, uh, like a lot more of the ball is in contact with the ground. Mm. And it prevents the ball from moving as quickly. And also, it starts bouncing. And it just becomes a lot harder to play on dry pitches. Okay. So, like, 
in in this hockey group, I mean WhatsApp group that I am in with uh, all my previous uh, teammates and all that I don't play any with anymore. Uh, they shared this one video where <laughs> it's just I just thought it was an interesting invention in the world of hockey where they are saying that okay, in a move to make field hockey more sustainable mm. and not use that much water, instead of watering the pitch, they have now developed a ball that has water inside that when mm. you hit water comes out. Okay. So as it rolls, uh, it, it sprays water around it. Uh-huh. And there's this whole contraption at the side where when the ball goes out, you put it in and there's a tunnel that all the balls get soaked and you take it out from the other side. So there's like seven balls. La. So, I mean, I find it, I don't know, I can't imagine it being replicated or feeling the same. Mm. But I just thought it was an interesting invention that I never would have thought of. La. Why don't they just grease the ball? Or oil it or something. Put oil on. But oil different lah. Because... Or they make it a bit slippery or something, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, water... Sure. Like, when you play on a nicely watered pitch, wow, it's fucking just... Uh, like, amazing lah. Hmm. But this one, I can't imagine. It's like, how you say ah? Uh, if you want to... If you want to go ice skating, mm-hmm. you just... I mean, that's like rollerblading lah. No, it's like the fake ice skating they used to have at MBS and all uh, remember so it's like, not ice it's not really ice and it's like a very smooth surface that plasticky kind of surface no? and then what do you wear you wear the blades as well you know but but it's it simulates ice but it's not really ice yeah do you try it I uh, no I've only seen people eh, did I try it I feel like I have I have gone on it la, yeah uh-huh. I feel like I have but yeah it's not it's not ice it's not the ice. same la. it's not the same la, yeah so that's why it just feels and like the ball because if there's water, there's definitely going to be momentum changing as the water rotates. They said yeah. there's some technology, mechanics inside. And so, in fact, I just found it funny. Like, mm. like, I can't imagine this taking off, but I just thought, hey, yeah, why? how come well, no one thought about it before? You what, send like, so much water on the pitch, why not put the water in the ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. This so, is like as big uh, an invention as the... Remember when basketballs at one point, there was an integrated pump? Oh, there was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I even had it before, like, where they... Integrate a pump into the basketball. Huh? So you just unscrew the pit and then you just pump, 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 and then that is it's pumped again. Yeah. But how come it never carried on? It carried on, it carried on. You can still find it. It's just uh I mean, people don't didn't find it necessary. Oh. It's a it's a solution looking for a problem. La. People are just like, okay, I'll just bring a pump. La. It's faster and easier. I saw this basketball TikToker or like a TikToker who comments a lot about basketball. He developed this basketball that apparently feels the same but has a lot less noise when you bounce it on the floor. Oh, really? So people can practice at home. Oh, that's useful. Yeah. yeah. I was like, hey, fuck, that's cool. And like even you, the videos of Stephen Curry trying it out yeah, and, all, yeah. uh, and all that. But yeah, this one I just thought it was interesting. Like you, soccer, you hardly see like big ass innovations in the balls. La. VAR. VAR. Yeah, VAR. But the no, ball itself? Isn't there that thing where they put a chip in the ball so that it knows, it tells you when it crosses the goal line or it's out oh, of play? Oh, but that's more for regulation per se. La. Uh, but, but, oh, I guess, yeah, there, are, there, are regu- there are innovations in the balls they use, right? like how easy it is to, you know, kick and rebound oh, yeah, like and all the that. swerve and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, I don't know, la. I, I'm in two minds about it also because I think like the invention of, like the, the, the pace of advancement of tennis rackets also changed the game of tennis a lot, right? Mm. To favor uh, a playing style that really... Uh, you power, can just, la, is it? Not power, but you can just wait at the baseline and, and yeah, oh. you can whack very hard from the baseline and don't have to worry about running in closer to the net, which kind of changed the offensive uh, strategies in tennis to a point where, mm. like, you know, the whole point of serve and volley is not there anymore, la, right? Oh. So these innovations, yeah, la, they you can say that you are allowing a human to reach their full capacity or best capacity. But at the same time, uh, yeah, like at what point does does the racket do more work than the human already? You know? And, and mm. that's something to think about. La. Yeah. yeah. La. yeah even, even hockey, they've changed the sticks over time. I don't know. I've been so out of it. But yeah, I just thought it was a interesting thing. And you see the video, like, hmm, is this going to ever be work? Uh? But yeah, it's all mm. interesting. Interesting. But yeah. Cool. Cool, man. By that's... the time we record next, Co-play week is over already. Oh, yeah. yeah it's the last... <laughs> Maybe they got surprise show. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. On call. Yeah, like, wow, encore. you know, just everyone who hasn't gotten a ticket, you know, you can book your tickets and... Wow, that'd be epic. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Then you see Terrence fucking... I'll be there, I'll the be there. Best. Oh, my God. I will go for that, <laughs> that <laughs> special one because it's that special where that you didn't special. plan months in advance for it. Yeah. Oh, I'll be that pissed, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> well, even if it's like even the 60,000 migrant workers, you'd be very pissed. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if it's 59,999 migrant workers and one Terrence, I'll be fucking pissed. pissed. <laughs> I'll be fucking pissed. Yeah. But uh, yeah, cool. thanks for listening, everybody. And remember, if you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with at least one person who may not have heard, with us, or heard of us. And if you want to work with us, just hit us up at contact at ministryoffunny.com. Cool. Thanks, everybody.